to allow a couple of seconds there, but actually in the meantime, Kadian actually gets the kill towards Adren. So Bomb planted, five alive, not bad at all here for the T side coming out of this one. It looks like they're just feeling confident, taking the fight. Bubble does one, gets a good bit of damage, but Hobbit fancies his odds, but it's not going to go well. Still there's away. the cleanup, this is going to get them pumped up. As soon as they get that final kill, there's the shout. This is round by round process for Rogue. They know this is not a map they should be able to win if you go through odds. If you go through stats, it is not a map they should be closing down on. No. A close game potentially, yes, competitive, sure, but probably not on the close. So this one for Rogue is... Third map, we were meant to close it into. Opportunity for us to not go to the lower bracket here. Exactly. And that's the big thing, because this is a double elimination tournament, so whoever loses this still has an opportunity to pro progress on through, but I think everybody, when they look at the teams that are competing at this tournament, they've pegged Gambit as probably the favorites to be able to walk away with uh, the, the lion's share of the prize pool, but Rogue is putting up a fight right now, and it's like you said, I mean, they did not think that they were going to win Nuke, and rightfully so, considering that I figured Gambit was going to have more up its sleeve. This position from Hobbit, though, goes unchecked. He's going to get one for free. Tensky's going to be able to trade that out and goes doubly so as he does manage to take down a second player in Mo. And long range spray, Doja's able to find Tensky. So trades back and forth and they find another one on a Glace. So not a good position for the uh, Rogue Boys to be in right now. And two players stuck down here on long A. They can get Zeus over here with the scout to take a long range battle. And he's going to do just that. Takes down Bubble. This is replay of uh, the second half, second round of Nuke all over again where Rogue win the pistol and they lose the incoming uh, anti-eco round, anti-force by round. Yeah, it's not a, not a good look for the Rogue Boys. A little bit disjointed, a little bit here, there, and everywhere, playing to the buy that Gambit had. We, you, you see so often any Deagle and Scout combination working obnoxiously well, and actually that smoke going to be a bit of a favor there for Victor. He's not actually been spotted, but was he's that a spray. CT smoke? Yeah, it was, I'm pretty sure. Um, and there you go, close from Dozier anyway. But at the end of the day, uh, Gambit will stabilize to some aspect. Money's still pretty weird for them, if I'm honest. Yeah, they can they can spread out a little bit here and keep everyone in a decent position buy wise. But for Rogue, straight back on the buy. No messing around here. This this could be just a quick B hit possibly that Molly may be put to short. I'm curious to see if Tensky's going that way. If he does, it'd be the Molly towards short possibly, and then the play off the back of it, give them early step towards the site. Victor Smoke can go towards the site itself from this corner. It's just above the kind of higher pieced brick over by the monster tunnel. I'm wondering if that's where they're going to go to. It looks like it, but again, Rogue want to keep it simple. A nice B hit at this point would not be surprising. They're on a bit of an additional buy. Yeah, they could have gone for a faster execute, but they were actually really late getting out of spawn, uh, mm. coordinating their buy moving forward. So Kadian actually getting scouted from long A. He's, the, he's been doing a lot of lurking uh, from time to time, too. You saw him LMS a lot of times on Mirage. That's last man standing for those that aren't savvy with the uh, acronym that I'm throwing out there. But... Um, there were multiple times where he was the last man alive coming in towards connector on a late A hit. This time around, he gets caught out early. He's going to get found out. He's going to get tagged up down to 32 HP. A lot of work left to be done in this round for both sides, but finding that early damage is pretty good. But where's the defense on the B bomb site? They've got a player in heaven. They've got a player in the pit over towards B. Zeus is going to have a lot to do moving forward. And he's actually thrown the scout over and picked up the UMP, so he's at least got a little bit of mobility. And he's got the armor penetration of that UMP. Okay, so the smoke's been put down. It's the one that I at least predicted for one of the two players, but this is a little curious. Where's the push? So, so the molly, yeah, the molly went towards the toxic barrels. That's fine. They need to be quite quick off the hit here, and they still need to check for Zeus. He can still be a threat, but well handled by Bubble, but not all at the same time, but still frags come in, and somewhat unwarranted, you can argue, but frags nonetheless now down to a 1v1. What on earth has happened here? And look at this mo, 4 HP, Bubble. Merely nine, but he's still going to give a good old go. There's 10 seconds left. Mo is is in a really weird predicament. He's going to have to stay around it just in case the plant comes in. But there you go. The close comes out with a CZ, and he is fine. He weathers the storm, gets the AK, and gets the other another round on the board for Gambit. Scary thing about that, too, is the fact that losing all of that economy, they're going to have to rebuy into this one. Rogue is going to have to go for another save round, so that's going to at least allow Gambit to try to stabilize their money moving forward. But you can see Hobbit, even with the MP9 buy-down, sitting on $800. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a dicey situation. If they lose more players into this one, I mean, it's less for the terror side to work with. They don't pick up the head armor into this round. They're not going to fully invest into this because they want to get the full buy into the next round. But... Even with the P250s, you saw the range from Bubble. He was able to pick off one of the players that was up in the uh, 
up in the heaven spot at B-bomb site. That's not a duel that you should lose to a pistol player by any stretch of the imagination. So any damage that Rogue can do into this round is going to pay dividends for him down the long haul. Those, yeah. Flash over. Actually catches no one. This potentially could be a problem. And there it begins. Zeus falls, but not the end of the world when they keep yeah, it in yeah. check. That's all you need. As long as it doesn't spiral, it doesn't matter. It's, Nicely done. It, it's always going to have potential, but as I said, so if someone's there, you're fine. And that's as simple as you need to be. Mo just keeps it exactly where it needs to be. Doesn't let them get any more than that one. You know, it starts to get a little bit worrying. Like, oh, no, not like this. But it's fine. Three to one now. Gambit, good, good position. Better position than what Rogue would probably want here. Considering they're down to a Galil, far from ample buy in the form of utility. Couple of mollies are being used early. This could be for a bit of additional pressure towards B, but you've got to be careful the bombs here. And if these guys get confident on the Gambit side, you're going to be in trouble. This is actually really scary. Can we go back to Mo for a second? He's going to have an opportunity at, a, at an off-frag. All right, we missed it. But Kadian coming around late from spawn, trying to make his way back to join his teammates at short B, and Mo taking an aggressive posturing towards the monster pipe, finds that early frag, and that's really, really nice because they're able to swing the man advantage with the two-for-one trade yeah. um, over towards the B bomb site. So nicely done from Gambit. They're going to be on the right foot moving forward into this one. They've just got to be careful because there is a late lurk over towards short B by the sandbag. So Victor's going to be over in that. Is that Victor or is that Bubble? That's Bubble. Bubble's going to be in that position right now and uh, potentially go for the rotate picks as they come around the side. But they're not forcing Gambit away from this. Gambit are fine in this 2-2. Until the players at A feel uncomfortable from maybe Banana, maybe Long, maybe Toys, it doesn't really, like, wherever it comes from, it doesn't really matter. Until they feel uncomfortable, and when you're doing that, it doesn't matter at all. When Mo takes matters into his own hands, that's perfect. It leaves the, it means that Zeus and Dozier don't have to worry too much. The double face is an issue, but then they're not going to predict a player from Monster and look at it. Already a Dozier lurks from beneath. He comes up, gets the frag, bomb trickles down towards his position. It puts Victor even worse of a position. He has to commit to get the bomb. It allows time for the CTC to get into a good position. And now for him, he's fighting against such great odds. Yeah, and Hobbit coming around from short. Plants him, takes him down. Four rounds for Gambit. Another reset. No bomb planned here for the Rogue side. So they're going to be back onto the pistols, try to make something happen into this one. But I want to see some sort of an accelerated strat out of them. They haven't really pushed aggressively behind any of this stuff. Even on the round that they threw out the smokes and the Molotov towards that B-bomb site, they didn't aggress behind it. They kind of stalled out. We saw that on Mirage. That was ultimately their downfall on their terrorist side. They weren't able to get a lot of rounds together because they kept stalling out on these pushes. Even though they won the pistol round, I think they ended up getting five or six rounds in their half. And that's just not going to be not going to be nearly enough into this one. Um, especially on a map like Overpass, where things can start to spiral, spiral out of control. You can see Gambit starting to get that good money. They kept players alive into the last round. So this is really a tough spot for uh, for Rogue to be in, and Zeus farming up the cash money with the MP9 is not going to help their cause at all. No, just in case you were wondering when I said Banana, it is just short A, essentially, next to toilets. The Basically, where Moe's watching now. The curved hall. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a call I've picked up, so apologies again if it's something that's not all that common. It's... it's Mostly what a lot of the pro players call it because short color to relates to both Steel sides. Steel called it something the other day. I watched his demo review of Automatic on this map, and he, he was calling it, I can't remember what he called it the other day. But um, he, had a, he had a specific... Some great calls. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a very unique person. That was a, actually a really great watch for anybody who wanted yeah. to, uh, to see some fundamentally sound CS. Automatic is definitely on the up and up. To be fair, Steel's content of the demo reviews are phenomenal as yeah. well. So if you are actually very interested in... Um, Learning. Very, very meticulous breakdowns as well in the kind of push and pull effect within CS and kind of the implications behind what you do and the intentions. Really, really worthwhile watch. So um, I hope Steel keeps doing those. And it's good to see him casting some stuff as well. And him, him yeah, he's going to be up at uh, the iBuy Power Masters yes. along with Dazed. Yes. Bach, Blue, Dazed, and Steel are going to be your commentators for that. Really cool stuff. That's some stacked analysis, I'm not going to lie. Like, That's those ridiculous two, that analysis. Pretty crazy. All right, let's jump into this round. Though. We've got a full buy from both sides. No AWP really for the T side, which eh, I'm not sure if it's a huge problem, but it could maybe hurt them a little bit down the line, but we'll see at this point. Again, they've got some decent control to start with, not being humbled early on, no aggressive CT AWPing to really keep them back. They've got underpass control. The problem is Zeus, though. Zeus and this play <laughs> up short B, that is a huge problem. Zeus has not had to move yet. He can smoke off the kind of water and then just push up a little bit, have a little bit of a peek, have a little bit of a look, play the doorway, and just kind of wait on the peaks, wait on the swing, and they've got so much control. This is a lovely position as well. Zeus can not necessarily solo it, 
but he can just allow the other player on B to fall back away from it. Zeus has so much information, and he cuts off, rotates. Again, kind of this double-edged sword that works really, really well for CTs. It does allow the rest of Gambit as well to focus on towards Long. Hobbit's found two, but again, there's still presence on Long that Mo hasn't spread out yet, so we'll see. It's okay, Incendiary goes out, Flashbangs as well, gonna rain on out. He's gonna take the shoulder check, and he's actually gonna drop Bubble, which had the bomb on his back as well. Does forfeit, refaces towards Long A, gets planted by Katie and taken down with a nice headshot, crisp from the AK, but the push is ultimately gonna be coming in and actually going favorably for Rogue right now. They're able to find Hobbit and Adrin, clear out that A bomb site. They've gotta deal with Zeus, who's worked his way around towards Optimus, and they do just that. Victor's gonna find him, takes him down. But look at this lurk from Doja, coming from the back lines, the depths of hell. And Doji's going to be able to pounce. Finds the knife out. Kadian's going to go down. One player left to beat on 12 HP. That's going to be Victor, who's actually found himself reverse side of dumpster by the stairs from CT. And this is a powerful position, but he gives it up. And Doji is going to be able to clutch it out. Six to one now for Gambit. Salvages the AWP. The economy is looking still very solid for the Gambit side. The bomb plant for Rogue and the money bonus is starting to stack up, so they should be able to invest into this next round. But it's a good look for Gambit right now. Yeah, look at the money. Holy smokes. Four players over 10K before the buy down. Yeah, you know, Zeus was a little low, but that's no problem. That's an easy drop out there. And you look at the opposite side, again, Galil's having to come into the matter. Sadly for Rogue, the run and gun style they were theorizing could work is simply not having it. Gambit are not giving them much room to play with. They're not giving them too much unbridled aggression. It's actually very well contained and well thought out positioning. It's it's to define map control. We saw the push up there with Zeus and whoever it may be who came up on short as well. I think it was Zos Dozier probably um, to create that really nice combination. It's very, very well constructed. And again, they're going to take a bit of a gamble here, at least for Gambit. Just don't play people on long early. We'll take a bit of a bit of a risk that someone could be slow walking it. But for now, we'll just face toilets and banana. We'll we'll make a bit of a guess that Rogue won't just instantly play, play people towards long. That's fine. It works so you can slowly play it back in from sight. And Rogue really don't have much step towards the map yet. So look at this damage. That's got to be gutting for Glaze. Yeah, they actually had Adrian up in heaven jump spotting for the squeaky door just to open. And he's going to be able to spot it. They don't actually land the spam, but he's going to be able to signal to a teammate to drop a nade out and they do some serious damage. And again, this is this is one of those kind of maps too. When you're when you're playing CT side on the A bomb site, you know, you see aggression towards party with the AWP with the player going down into subway. It's kind of like Mirage where it's like mid on the CT side. You either try to gain control of CT side mid and play it or you leave it passively and take the extremities of the map and then try to lock things down. Same thing kind of goes with bathrooms, where you can take full bathroom control and then go for the backstabs later. And that's kind of what Hobbit's in the situation of doing right now. He finds the Lurker and Katie and the hit's coming towards B, but he's at least taken one of the heads off the snake in the in the execution. And now they're just completely just gimped from it. Yeah. Not a player dies on Gambit's side. And that's the money just going to get even more out of control here. Yeah. Zeus, who you said had a low bank last time, he just needs to rebuy nades. That's it. Yeah, this is this Massive. is this has got to the point where Rogue, I don't know how much they can change because they've never really pushed Gambit that far to understand the full depth of what they have. Um, I never felt they've had consistent step towards sites. I don't feel that they've forced Gambit to play any sort of way. It's been consistently Gambit being the ones defining the pace. It's been Mo having his way with things. You've got Hobbit as well coming into his own. Dozier and Zeus being a really really daunting duo by B. And really, Rogue have gone, well, we, d we don't know how to get back into this now. And this was always meant to be the case, that it was meant to be, if it goes to the third map, it was going to be the lockout from Gambit. But it was never meant to get there because Nuke was meant to be that map for Gambit anyway. Yeah. And remember, I said that Mo needed to step up on this, that he was quiet on Nuke. He's currently just, he's having a quiet but very impactful match at 11 yeah. and 3. And you've seen how that op has been dynamic on that A bomb site. You know, he's been pushing aggressively with a teammate in tow Hobbit, usually going towards the bathroom's connector area, and they're able to shut things down. Then they fall back into the site. They're going to be able to get the long picks and everything like that because the money has been so bad on Rogue, we haven't seen Katie in with an op. So. This is this is really solid for Gambit. You know, we talked. I, I talked outside with the Rogue guys, and I said, you know, yeah. Gambit couldn't stop your upper push on Nuke, and they said, well, that's because they never had the money for Molotovs. One Molotov in towards the in towards Hut could have stopped that entire push. Yeah. But they never had the money for the incendiaries because they're six hundred dollars on the CT side versus four hundred on the terrorist side. So. Just that little bit of economic advantage that they had was able to net them so many rounds when they got onto the T side for Rogue. And you look at it this this time around, they don't have the off for Cadian, so he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mo to shut down that aggression towards long A, and they're like shooting fish in a barrel at that point. Yeah, a very succinct summary of some of the issues clearly that Rogue are facing here. At 7-1, to one, 
the sleepy me is not too worried about this. I'm pretty happy, if I'm honest, internally <laughs> grinning. Um, but They're doing it for you, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, to be fair, because you started to see Rogue really starting to step into what people had hoped to see from this very talented um, team that we saw the kind of, I guess, tactical side from Mirage, be it flawed or not. You saw the kind of explosive side that can come through on Nuke. Right now, we're seeing the not so great side on overpass so it's actually crazy to think that this yeah. could have potentially been a 2-0 for rogue if they were able to make that comeback happen on mirage yeah and they they looked so good on it initially if maybe they had a little bit more depth they had just a nice default nice mid take something one more round on their t side yeah anything like that could have been a big difference so for them if reflected upon after a loss here that is gonna be a very frustrating moment for them but the game is still certainly a foot it's certainly far from over here Still potential for Rogue to win the half. I mean, they've invested into armor and tech nines into this round. They're going to go long control in towards bathrooms, and this is Mo's playground. This is this is dangerous territory. Mo's going to take him into deep waters and drown him here if he can. This is going to be really difficult for him moving forward if they do decide to hit towards that long A corridor. The smoke comes out. That's going to be deep. He's going to have a gap. No. Just a little. Well, he pushes in front of it. This is actually really smart. There you go. Opening frag goes the way of Gambit, and it's Mo again. That's his 12th frag of the round, or 12th frag of the match. He's such a beast. To take that risk That's is so smart, so though. He knows it's got to be a reset. They haven't gotten the bomb plant. They could maybe buy up Galil's into this round, but without risk, you can't have reward. And that actually has been able to shuffle Adren over into the corner here. So are they going to check this angle? Nope. Spray down incoming. One. Oh, thought he was going to get another one. Wow. And all right, Rogue. Rogue. Yeah, just explode on the side. They get close enough to be able to utilize the weapon. Look at all the guns they've got, too, now. Yeah, what on earth was that? Just off the back of a couple of kills coming in at the right place at the right time, they get the perfect arsenal now as well to deal with this. And there you go, Bubble. Wow. All right. Close it down, and there's your second. So Rogue off the back of a pause as well. Something that was very, very well needed quite clearly at the scoreline they're at. Actually get some stability finally. They finally get an AWP. They finally get a full buy. And they finally get Gambit having to be a little bit more humble about this now. Yeah, that was... I mean, Adren should have had multiple kills there. Let's him go by, and unfortunately, they spin around. That was one of those situations where that $500 pistol outweighs that $3,100 uh, M4 because he was able... Well, what the hell was that bounce? He was able to win that duel. That's what I'm just trying to say. But Adren, he's coming back into this one. He throws a wonky smoke down into underpass, but that's okay because he's able to spin back around and find two at party. Thus, also dropping the bomb carrier as well. Goes for a little bit more, but Glace is finally able to take him down, but it's still a man advantage here for the Gambit side. It's going to be hard for them that. still with this sort of positioning from Gambit where they push forward to be able to create many chances throughout the map and as they again brute force their way forward, which it just isn't happening. Zeus and Mo just saying, no, simple as that. Not going to have it. Caden, if you want this round, you've got to go 1v3. You go for the BDP at this point. There's, there's no two ways about it. You, you've got a minute to save if you want to. Again, a long old time to try and do that for you. He does have a Tech 9 to fall back on, so he could find something here. Again, I'm not saying the AWP's not the viable one. It's more that it's something to fall back to if it's a situation the AWP just can't handle. So, I don't know what you plan to do here, bud, but yeah. I mean, better have something in mind. One of the issues that I have is he's actually gone through underpass, which is giving a lot of close quarter angles for CTs to, to be holed up in. And if that's the case, which obviously we know it's not, but if that were the case, then it's going to be very difficult. He actually does manage to sneak up and snag the bomb, and there's an open B bomb site for play. There's a rotation coming out. I believe that's Doja that's going to hightail it over towards that bomb site and try to lock it down. But, but they're going to see he's not there. It's, yeah. it's, it's good 20 for the seconds. Fact it's got to be a save now. He's actually made them play a site like he was committing. So he's going to be able to buy himself enough time to probably pull off a save here. Yeah. Which is actually very important and actually very smart of him to do. To be fair, the amount of flat Kadian gets... He does have some very, very smart, small pieces of play that people might not appreciate. Well, we saw that on, um, firsthand on Mirage, where he had that sneaky play, getting the bomb down on an eco round and just completely abandoning the bomb site. It was like a 1v3. He had a Glock. There was no way he was going to win it. He just runs over to the other bomb site while they're rotating in to, to retake and picks up a rifle for the next round. Economy saved. You know, it's small things like that that go unchecked uh, for a lot of players, you know, that people don't necessarily get to comment on. And uh, that some players that are out there, some viewers that are out there don't actually get to see, which is important because economic swings like that are pretty impressive and pretty impactful into a lot of these rounds. Aggression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hobbit's starting to feel confident. That's kind of deadly if you're on the T side and you're not checking for it. There it is. Trades come in, but the position he has gained from this is going to just pincer in Rogue. Now, this is uh, quite the T-sided, uh, excuse me, CT-sided map on occasion, don't get me wrong, but Gambit so far 
have been looking extraordinarily diligent. They've kind of recovered from what was being the issue. We haven't seen Rogue really stepping into this role just yet. Hobbit can just be such a nuisance here. If he dies, which he is, okay, now it's game back on. But if he'd bought a little bit more time from that position, that could have been something. We gained a ton of intel from that too. I mean, he was able to spot two players going down in towards Subway. So they know that there's going to be a presence over here. The big part about this right now is that there's still a forward bathrooms position from Zeus. So he's got the potential to get another one and done potentially from this area. He could push in behind them to go for the flank. Doja playing aggressive from the uh, short pipe. So he's going to be looking for Kadian to come around the corner. Kadian not checking. Kadian goes down. Tough spot to be in. And now Glace with only 19 HP. They've got the door lurker, but he's going to back off towards short looking for it. Good flash. Wow, that was beautiful. Perfectly, t perfectly timed team play. That was really nice. Respect. Yeah, that was actually very nicely done. Zeus, though, could be a problem here for them. Fight on the flank here. There's one. That's not the bomb, though, so there's still a very slim bit of chance for Glace, but he's already been taken so low from an early exchange. He's down to 19 HP, zero utility, 15 seconds. Goes for a bit of a nicer plan here. It is open for the spray just from short, but you've got to risk something in that situation, and that's the risk he took. The long rotate was coming in. It caught his attention for a second, and Zeus was there very quickly. Again, quite risky from Zeus to not necessarily go in alone, but play a little ahead of Adren there. Yeah. It could have maybe, you know, caused an issue down the line, but perfectly fine, well handled at the end of the day, and the scoreline will further fall into the hands of Gambit here. Yeah, it was, it was fortunate that Adren actually pushing towards the underpass stairwell because um, you can hear that from where he was he was over getting closer to graffiti so he was able to hear the footsteps and he maybe thought that zeus could have gotten the kill and then fallen all the way back to the a-bomb site wasn't expecting him to be pushed up so i can understand that play um from zeus as much as i can understand that play from glaze but at least they get the bomb down so they're going to be able to force into this one but this is a really risky force right now i mean two tech nines they made it work with the pistols the last time but they went towards a this time they're going to be favoring towards b and zeus is actually going to spot this one out early i think the simple fact of the matter is they need rounds at this point yeah. so they just need to buy they just need to win and if it was just as simple as i'm saying it they'd probably have more than three <laughs> rounds on the board but that, that is the it's just kind of, that easy it's it's the short of the story here that they just simply need rounds yeah so Two is not really enough here for me, at least I feel. The Gambit, as much as they are very good on their CT side, they still have a lot of play on their T side too. And it looks like Rogue going back to a bit of a basic hit here, which is fine if you trade well. If you hit your shots and you trade in, fine. That's all you need to do. And so far, they've done really nicely yeah. at that. They've been able to do the kind of very basic smokes, nothing fancy about them either, but it's created this nice deep wall that they're out to play off. And that's purely forced them back. They're able to get the two close picks towards the site. And there it is, 4v3, bit of a boost there, going to give them a bit of vision down towards Monster, but not much more beyond that. I think the T's actually want to boost up into Heaven. That would be a really smart call, but they're going to get caught out. And Tenski's actually, did he get the player up? Yes, he did. He got glazed up onto the balcony, and he's just going to rain hell down from above. That's a beautiful job. I didn't think they actually got the boost in time, but they did get glazed up into Heaven, and that just completely thwarts any kind of a, a retake attempt here from the Gambit side. Going to be able to spot him out in the long run, but... I mean, even if you get that kill, there's not much Mo's going to be able to do in that situation. So nice looks from Rogue. I like that uh, that smoke wall, like you said. I mean, it, it forces the CTs to either commit to the site or commit to the retake. And that just isolated Doja into the site, and they were able to get the trade instantly. He gets one and done, and then they have no no opportunity for refrag, so they have to go for the retake at that point. So nicely, nicely executed from Rogue. Can we just appreciate this buy from Gambit? Two pistols, two orps, and an M4. That's... Yeah, that's it's okay. It's been special. And it's Zeus with the op. I mean, typically, we saw Doja with the second op on yeah. Nuke. I've seen Adren with a double op set up with Mo. This time, it's going to be Zeus, who he's the one that's been picking up the scout when they're on the uh, the force buy into the second round after losing the pistols. So maybe he's feeling it with the AWP. Going to have an opportunity. Mo not going to be able to connect. He fires a little bit too early. That flashbang spooks him a little bit. So he's going to fall all the way back towards the site. Maybe go bathrooms control with Hobbit. To be fair, if you're Zeus and you're in Na'Vi, you were never going to get much of a shot at orping, were you? Maybe he's a sick opper. Maybe he's an absolutely mental opper, but when you're just on a team with... Just slightly below Guardian. Yeah, yeah and, just and seized. Yeah, and seized. He was and the third best opper on the <laughs> five-man team. Yeah, that's not fun. All right, but you know, it's finally a shot. Let's see what you got here, Zeus. Not really going to do much just yet. It's pretty much all on Mo, to be fair, and anyone towards A. Bit of a split 
between Banana and Long. So if this comes through, it's going to be hard to handle, but we'll see if they can keep this one in check. Spots out the play towards Bank, and it's merely going to quicken the pace for Bubble here. He knows he's got a good shot towards this one. Hope it will cause a problem by the toilets, but it can be easily eradicated. A quick little trade will certainly do that. And now 4v4, except towards the site. You do not want to be playing retake with these orbs. And now the last two players have them, but you want to be saving those. Yeah, you want to get out of dodge right now. There's... There's really no silver lining to this round right now for the CT side of Gambit. You want to hang on to these rifles for the next round. They're going to have no money to work with going forward. You can see $100 on a Dren. Zeus surely doesn't have any economy left into this one. You can see, yeah, he's minimal as well. And this is Rogue starting to chip back into this one. We saw it late in... Uh in Mirage, they were able to start stringing a couple of rounds together on the T side. That's a nice shot. If they can take down a Dren here, this is going to be a full save. This might actually be a double eco uh, from the Gambit side. And there you go, Dren. He's getting chipped down. 13 health. He's getting locked in. Might be able to find one. Does? Can he fight his way out? He's looking for it. He does manage to find them right. both. He can get out of this. A couple more seconds. Oh, oh another my kill. God. Oh my God, he stayed alive. How the hell did that even happen? That's nuts. I, I literally just saw everyone on the uh, gambits. I've looked <laughs> relieved. It was just like Dozy just looking through the window, just like, oh my god, as if we just stayed alive with that. All right, that's that's pretty impressive. They actually managed to keep out of that. Dren, you're a beast. Absolutely sick. But I don't know how much difference it's going to make. Of course, it's it's better than what they would have had if he didn't do that. But still, it's a minimal uh, pickup here at this point. I don't know. Oh, what? Hello? Zeus? Dadian? Okay. Hello? Those is down in the smoke. The sex god is just smothered in players. Right oh. now. He's got his knife out. And it... <laughs> oh. Ah, ripper. Not going to happen. All right. There's so, the op, though. Yeah, 3v2. Probably not going to go for this. Probably worth a save. Yeah. What a weird round. Uh, I'm not really sure what was going on with Katie, and He gets backstabbed and taken down by Zeus. So doing a little bit of economic damage here. I mean, they did lose four players ultimately at the end of the last round, two players into this one, potentially more, if uh, they can find some exit frags. I mean, they, they fall all the way back around. They're going to get a chance at this one, I believe, as uh, Bubble's going to be coming around the side. Atrin's going to plan him, looking for some more, not able to connect on it, and that's going to put it into a position where Zeus can do a little bit of damage. He's going to find another kill out of this one. 13 health remains, but opportunity for him to pick up the AWP and run away with it. And there's no contest from Tenski. He's all the way over in bank at the A bomb site. So... Up gets carried over. Four rebuys again for the rogue side. They can't establish their economy now. So Gambit, ultimately, they win one round. They could reset rogue here. And that's scary. Well, it doesn't matter because it's the 15th round. But if they played 30 rounds in the first half, it would be, it would be implications. Be. But, but it's 2 a.m. So you know what? I can't count to potatoes, so don't worry about it. Nine to five. We are back on Rogue just running in. If, if things aren't working, you rush B and you don't stop. And it might work. So far... So many bodies and no, no decision on who to shoot. Adren. So far, Dozy and Adren. Yeah. You can't do this against CIS teams of any variety. It does. It's their play. Yeah. It's their play. They know the exact you counter to rush a rush B. B no stop. stop. You've learned now. Maybe they can do a slow... Methodical play that confuses the CIS teams going, I don't know why they've stopped rushing B. I've told them half of the strategy, and they've ignored it. This boost, though, could pay a dividend. Zeus getting caught out. Can he land the shot in return? He gets the dink out. And there's the spam coming out from Adrin, so nicely found there. Doja able to get the backstab, pushing out through the monster side, but that leaves Bubble in a 1 versus 4, made a 1v3. Still a ton of work. He does have the bomb, so that's a little bit of a saving grace. He's got a smoke and, and a... Molotov to work with, see if he can do anything, but he's going to go all the way back around. Long A is probably the play, but Mo is over here with the AWP looking for it. He's just going to throw the smoke out and bail back to the B-bomb site. I actually like this play. A lot of people don't realize the effectiveness of throwing out your utility to bait rotates. That's something that, you know, when you play, like, you pickup games what? and stuff like that, that people don't understand. I will give you a lesson in COD 4 Pro Mod that you don't want. Just because Call of Duty 4 Remastered Warriors Core is being released, there was once upon a man called Stevie, and he did something called the Stevie Smoke. He played for Fnatic. He was one of the best players in the world. Olaf Meister recently fake nicked as, as him. He was that good. And he used to do that all the time. It was, a, it was, a, it was called the Stevie Smoke. You, you throw it to the opposite side to where you're going, and he gets the players to rotate, or at least consider that being the option where you might get a favorable entrance towards the other. But story time aside, it is going to end up being Gambit with a decent half. Rogue did have a kind of revisit of a competitive matchup. Though. Stevie Smoke. Stevie, not Stewie. Stevie Smoke. It's oh, a good attempt. Christ. Christ, how young are you people? <laughs> Christ. 
Somebody in chat knows. Somebody in chat knows. Please, okay, okay, just, 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 just have curiosity. Sorry. Please press one in chat if you know, if you knew that person. You already know they're just gonna spam it anyway. No, no, I want to know. Because I'm 12 years old I and I cringe know. at everything. LOL, XD. I want to know. I want to know if you guys know who it was. Second half pistol round gonna be coming out though. 10-5 scoreline. Gambit able to recover in the the last uh, closing gambit of that half. So 10 to 5 scoreline. Five rounds the difference. Yeah. See, they're just gonna spam one anyway. I believe them. I believe these people. You're good I don't. people. 69 in Shadow. You'd, oh, 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 oh. You'd never lie to Twitch. Don't you dare lie to me. It's 2 a.m. And I'm sitting here for you guys. You can't lie on the internet, <laughs> no, that's Lauren. True. It's true. That's true. It's true. All right. So Rogue Warrior is going to be space. slapped back. And look at Gambit. The pace has been quickened. Bob mentality. And they are going straight in on this Glock train. <gasps> and they're not stopping. Yeah, they've actually already taken over bank control of Dren, pushing down. And this round is done. Bubble going to be on the back foot. He's going to have to do something miraculous in a one versus five. Can he even get the one? Yes, he can. He's looking for four more. Clutch your kick. There's one more. One right in his face. Trying to get a third frag out of this one. Surely this can't be the ace play. No, it's not. Adren finally going to quell the anger. And that will be an 11th round for Gambit. This is what we expect to see on their terror side, though. Their CT side was solid. Average. 10-5 score line. Pretty typical. But... Terror side, I expect them to take over. And this is what Rogue was talking about outside. They know that they're going to be aggressive. They know that they're going to push very aggressively throughout. And this is a neat buy from Rogue. They, they completely negate the scout and go for a UMP with body armor on bubble. What? Interesting. I, Maybe it'll work out. Who knows? Yeah, it's, it's not actually that much of an awful plan. It's got good armor pen. I, it's, it's not awful. It's It's... It's fine. A little unorthodox, but fine. Um, we'll see what Gambit takes so far in the form of map control. Where are they tendering towards to begin with? So we've got a playthrough on a pass. That's fine. All clear. All, all good. It does mean, however, that for Gambit, you'll be sitting there going, right, well, they're on pistols, guys. They'll be playing from the sides. We've got, to, we've got to clear these corners. We only have one molly as well for this. So a little bit risky for them now to play towards this one because there's a bit of pressure now towards towards the toilets, which actually could really, really hurt Gambit. Yeah, this position that Kadian's in, I mean, he, he might spot shadows before they come around the corner. Looking a little bit too high. He is going to pounce on this. Does tremendous damage to a second player. They actually both go on that. And it's a two-for-one trade. Made a two-for-two. Two and then Zeus coming in, sweeping them down. And that's going to leave it on both Bubble and Tenski. They still have the UMP that hasn't been revealed. It was solo play on the B-bomb site, but the push is going to be coming in towards the A site. Now Bubble from the back lines. Mo just completely just denies. And that is going to be the seven-round difference. 12 to 5 score line. We're going to see the full save come out from Rogue. Potential for the 13 for Gambit. And, um, yeah, the potential was there for that. I mean, Kadian playing the bait and switch with his teammate at the, uh, at the curved hallway, but... Ultimately, doesn't end up working out as Zeus goes up and uh, slaps him down. And as this rather unthrilling round will start to unfold, as it shouldn't really do much, I really like the way this one almost has my perfect bind in Twitch chat, which is my I'm going to tilt people bind, which is you peak, you lose. But it's everything is misspelled. So it's all incorrect you, peak is incorrect, and loose at the end with a really nice smiley face. It's, it's the most enraging thing to ever see spammed against you after you die. Um, but please feel free to use it at home. I like to help you out. That's the pro tip for the day. And let's jump back into this one, Gambit. Do want to say Jonik, thank you, by the way. Jonik and Chad. He said he loves my casting. I appreciate that. Aww. I do. Thank you, my man. I got an iHeart Mega Man in there, too. Which you guys are beautiful. Machine is dead to me. He's left me and forgot me from the COD 4 days. He was a scrub anyway. I coached his team. He was bad at Crash. Thank you, Alex. That's going to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Hurt my feelings. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and, the hell's um, a cod? Christ. Uh, Katie and though, can't cook a fish. That's about it. Uh, Katie and last man standing, no armor as well. So this rifle, great as it may be, unless you're going to hit that first shot real quick, you're not going to get much done. Yeah, bomb being planted too. It's just not a situation. Tap, tap, tap a -roo, tap a -roo. Hobbit, tap looking for it, trying to tap it in. Just tap it in. Zeus is going to be able to find it though. So they do ultimately salvage the AK, and they also get that. Uh, they also get the UMP kill at the end, so the money bonus as well. You can actually see seventy-nine hundred dollars there for Zeus moving into the first gun round, and he doesn't have to upgrade anything into into a rifle. So he actually drops over to a teammate so that they can keep the high bank rolling. So this is a good look from Gambit and. Our first and potentially only bountiful rifle round to come out from Rogue. And look at this utility, Lauren. 
That's abysmal. That's not pretty, is it? Not pretty at all. I mean, they've got a handful of smokes, two flashes. They're going to have to win the aim duels. Katie and onto the glass cannon op as well, so the, they're going to have to win all of these aim duels moving forward. It's a tough spot for them. I don't know how they're going to do this, if I'm honest. Um, you, you look at all the possibilities of how it goes down. Unless Gambit rush it, you know they're going to be in such a bad position with the utility that they can't stop a hit. There's no instant hit factor. There's no diffuse kits as well. That's going to help. There you go. <laughs> I, I don't see any feasible way that they really pull this off. And one minute left. So you can see Gambit now coming into this. Not sure what the buy is for one. Not sure how much utility they have. And every single piece they pull out of them is perfect. That's another 15 seconds that now Rogue can't actually withhold them anymore. So yeah. as long as Gambit keeps some, two smokes, maybe two mines. Like what they're down to now, they could probably still expend one smoke and I don't really mind. Two is enough to break you into most of these sites here with a flash, a molly to clear out a couple of corners. You can play late and that's something that Zeus will bring in that as long as you're good with your mollies and use the right place to put them, you can hit these sites incredibly late because that just ticks off places you have to check individually and this is hit coming in. Now the problem is that Victor had pushed up quite aggressively and Caden's hitting shots. Oh. There's the follow up. That is big from him. Finally comes into his own. He knows there's more coming but he's not done performing yet. Three for the man himself and now Zeus is reeling 15 seconds but surely he can't get to the side I think someone's watching the cross yeah playing from the back lines of graffiti but he hits the shot anyway he's gonna get the bomb down he's gonna put himself into a position to clutch this out Kadian who's gone huge into this round I mean it's a one versus four it's very unlikely that he's gonna be able to get this and Glaze coming around for the back lines is gonna be able to find that frag so ultimately Rogue is gonna come down it's the heroics of Kadian at the point blank AWP gonna be able to find those frags and, and shut down the, the harassment over towards the A bomb site. the execution gets stifled before it comes out nicely played from him so Rogue find themselves a sixth round but again it's I mean a tall task for them to get back into this seven rounds still being the difference into this matchup so Gambit they've still got the the I mean, the advantage going forward, the big thing is is that they got the bomb plant, so they're going to be able to buy up again, and they're going to have the, the utility advantage moving forward into this round. Now, the utility is going to be better for Rogue, but it's still going to be lacking. I mean, Molotov smoke for Kadian. At least he's got armor this time. He didn't have armor in the last round, too, which made that even more impressive that he was able to get those three kills. No, that, that actually was impressive, to be fair. Um, again, though, thank you, Twitch chat, for putting many a donger in chat. I really appreciate every single one of you. Um, but let's see if Gambit can work their way in now again, working with less against more. So in theory, the answer should be no, but maybe they'll be wise to the ways. And I, I, I'm not sure, is Victor playing the exact same spot as before? Or was that bubble playing? That They'll never before. expect the same thing twice. I don't, if I, I don't know if I like it. It's, it's in theory a one and done spot, but it's actually quite hard to trade it because you well, have to expose yourself to the A side with the three players. So again, I don't like the theory of it, but actually, in, in practical execution, it can work out quite well because normally you don't expect the kind of position to be there. Kadian's actually playing the same spot too. Yeah. So, I mean, close on the billboard. Um, he's able to, to swap back and forth, check long A, check bathrooms, check long A, check bathrooms, try to take the heat off of Victor in that position. But, yeah, it's, it's like you said. I mean, now they've kind of doubled up towards the bathroom side of things with a um, rotation that's actually going back towards B. This is... Kind of fascinating, actually. They throw the smoke out for bank. The return incendiary is going to go out, so the push isn't going to be coming towards the A bomb site just yet. But Mo's trying to get himself into a position that he can actually start to work picks. He's got two players in tone in tow, along with the bomb behind him. And look at this, actually, Victor, he's pushed all the way up. He's got a great off angle here. Glace is going to find Hobbit at the B bomb site, so the jig is up. They're going to have to commit into this one, and now it's going to be Victor. They're, they're just going to play for the retake. They've got the numbers advantage. And unless Doji can do something pushing down and towards the CT side of things, it's going to be very difficult for them moving forward. Here's the footsteps, though. This is going to be quite... Rip. No, hello. Tenski hits a nice shot. That's that's a perfect step in the the right direction. It's very tough now to lock this down purely because they can throw bodies at it. Unless they peek one by one. Katie, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why? Has this come down to now this situation? Thankfully, though, Mo is low, but the bomb is for him. They don't have an eight, but they do have a flash. That one is oh, he he gets one. The nade. He's got the nade. It does oh. him. Tensky stays alive, but time is fine. He's got this one in the bag. Oh, my God. What oh a chaotic end of that God. round. Mo almost with the hero nade. I would have actually loved that if he didn't throw it towards the APC and actually threw it over the wall to clip Tensky when he was running oh. back towards the site. That was almost a 1v0 Bathroom break. finish there. So a little bit spurious right there, but whew, coming down to it. I mean, we are going to have a pause come out, but we're going to be seeing uh, 
seeing what they can possibly do moving forwards. Yeah. Uh, sure, yeah, I guess it's a pee break here for, yeah, the, it is uh, break. They just for the boys. Yeah, it's been a long day. Definitely can't uh, can't say anything about that. But no. What if he What if he got that nade kill? Oh man, that would be a little bit different. But right now, all I know is I am sleepy. I've been up from six a.m. Have some more pillows. I have all the pillows, all the things. Help! It just makes me feel sad because it's not a bed. All the things. Have all the things. I know that I'm gonna get like five hours sleep. I'm just gonna be sat here really grumpy tomorrow. <sighs> you, you, you wait till you see the grumpy. That's fine. Stuff. We're gonna give a Valor and uh, Sunny the first game of the day. They're so gonna we get can the first two then. games of the day. There that's you go. What's that's gonna fine. happen. They can do two back to back. I know they're not watching this back at exactly. the hotel. They're they definitely are not asleep dedicated. right now. They're not hashtag dedicated. Sla or hashtag passion. Slackers, man. Exactly. Slackers. Shout out to the StarCraft crew. Just hashtag passion. <sighs> I'm just I'm just hitting a limit, boys. Uh, grab a beer. Probably not advisable. Brain will just go into, you know, seeping out of my nose mode. Uh, I had four earlier. It was okay. <clears throat> it was all right. You had a nap. I did. You had a flat out nap. I it did. It looked comfortable. And I was annoyed. You jelly? Yeah, yeah. Should be. Well, the thing is that I can't nap. You had you the opportunity. Mean? No, I can't nap. Napping doesn't work. Napping turns into sleeping. It's as simple as that. It's um, not my problem. <sighs> I'm too old for this. Not my problem. I'm like 45. Oh, for crying out loud, you're younger than I am. Shh. You had a nap. It's fine. I'm an um, old man. I'm allowed to take naps. Have another sugar-free Red Bull? No, it's not really great for me to be drinking another Red Bull right now because I do. Birthday is actually great. hilarious. It's very fitting. I was born on April Fool's Day. Really? Yeah. Christ. Yeah. It all makes sense now. 1985. <laughs> Jesus. Holy Whistling shit. down a mic is really nice as well. That's woken me up at least with the piercing sound of my eardrums bursting. Glorious. Back underway, well, though, 13 to 7. There you go. The match is live. It is. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how this one goes down. As at the moment, really, Gambit don't have much to play with in this one. A couple of flashes, a bit of a smoke, but only upgraded pistols and a touch of armor. So it should be a walk in the park for Rogue. It should be 13 to 8, but we've seen stranger things happen today. A little bit of spam being exchanged there, but it is going to be on the back foot for Gambit. They're going to be on the safe. Pistols in hand. They do have a little bit of utility, though. Two flashes, smoke grenade. We're going to be lining this one up. Moe's going to go uh, potentially aggressive with Doja towards long A. Try to at least get a bomb plant. A little bit of a silver lining out of the round. Le unlikely that they're going to win this, but we actually saw the rogue side went around like this. Now, this boost is pretty nice. Going to be able to peek out over the top of that smoke, but push is going to be coming in. This is going to get dangerous. They're getting up really close with these pistols. Going to have to do some work, but it's Tinsky that replies in kind. Able to find two, make it three. Zeus, the only one to get a kill out of this round for the uh, terrorist side. He gets shut down by Glaze. Nice round from Rogue. Yeah, um, to be fair, they had three players on the upper side then. Kadian got boosted on one. They had one over by uh, the truck. So they're always in a good position. Kadian just had to not die and give up the AWP. And, you know, I thought that'd be fine. They can resupply everyone else. The money's not phenomenal for Rogue, but it's okay. But the point is Gambit now have a decent buy. Now they have the orb. Now they have armor. Now they have utility. Not brilliant. No molly. So it can't be that very, very slow play. And actually, Kadian feeling wow. a little bit spicy. And he gets a bit of a pick up there. That is brilliant for them to start off with. This could be another round on the board for Rogue. Yeah, and, um, this is kind of what we saw when they got onto the CT side of their uh, of Mirage. I mean, Gambit actually, albeit they were up 14 to six at one point on Mirage, 15 to eight, and Rogue was able to string it back and ultimately lost 16 to 14. This time they've actually got a better opportunity into this one because the scoreline's a little bit closer. They're not already fighting off match points at, at eight rounds to their name. They're they're able to at least have a little bit more of a cushion, five round being the difference, but. That opening pick could pay dividends for them in the long run because no damage has actually been dealt on any of the CT side. And they've still got a boatload of utility, plus four kits on the board. So fully stocked. Looking good. All right, let's see if there's any picks available for Gambit to get this one back. Um, it's, all of them are tradable for Rogue. So even if Dozy, let's say, picks up one on long, there's, there's a player by Bank watching this. So Dozy's trying to bait out, see if he can spot anything, see if anyone's going to take a quick shot there at him. Now going to... Good. Hear all, all this, this. Too, yeah, yeah, exactly. So they know there's at least one player here. Not selling a fake, not selling oh, anything. Oh, he's pushing else. on it, too. And he's going to peek for information. If he comes around at the right time there on long, that's there it is. There is. Victor's found Dozier. He could find a lot more as well. Hobbit, it's all but a ruse. 
the bomb isn't going that way. It's still over by Banana. The slow push up here. Zeus now knows there's one on long, which could be a problem because it's quite hard to clear unless they do that. And now it's easy. Two players still on this site, though. Yeah, they got to clear out Optimus. They got to clear out the back lines. And there's the op frag coming in from Katie and finds both of them, takes him down. He's really starting to pick up the pace here. I mean, we've seen it. He started off slow. I mean, he's only 15 and 15, but he's kind of starting to lead the charge here. And Gambit going to take a timeout. They're going to they're going to talk things over, see if they can figure things out. Those, yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's going to be the tactical. Shouting the others. Well, not shouting. He's doing a very. It's basically Dozier and Zeus talking right now. Um, Stern. He's just he's he saw the camera coming back in. Not happy with it. Uh, he's like, no guys, I can see you trying to trying to get that solo shot of me. Can't do it. Can't get that going. And Zeus will take over. Maybe just uh, Dozier kind of relaying the issues that he's kind of suffering, and then Zeus can try and discuss the rest of it. But Zeus always known as quite a fiery character. We haven't seen much of that just yet. At least for, through the personality aspect. He's yeah, he's kept his cool. What yeah. seems to be. What is my favorite map? That is such a weird question, but Mirage or Inferno? Like between the two. Inferno. I like you were you were raving well. about that earlier. I like the old one as well. Yeah, but yeah those two. Of course, I never played it on a professional level, so I can't really say that I had the na same strife that a lot of other people have on that map, but mm. we'll have to see. Uh, we're going to go live back into this one. It is going to be another save round here for Gambit. Pistols in hand. Mo going to be on the Glock, no armor, trying to save up for the AWP so he can try to make an impact. But uh, talking about impact, Rogue, these last couple of rounds have been doing a tremendous job. Adrian fast through the subway, trying to catch out a player, but look at this, just falling all the way back. I think they knew that it was going to be some sort of a fast strategy, so they just drop out some nades and get the hell out of dodge. And that's the right call. Well read by Rogue. Yeah, nice stuff. Uh, getting a really nice feel for it. I think when you're just having a hot game, sometimes you're just having a hot game. Um, you don't have to necessarily kind of dig much deeper than that. You kind of just get the feel of how the game's going. And so far, that's what they're reading here really, really well. So for Gambit, again, it's going to be quite tough to take that away from them. Rogue, quite quite a strong-minded team. But Gambit do have so many rounds in their favor still. 13 to 9 is still a very nice scoreline for them. A couple more decent buys you could see it maybe happening, but it feels like they have hit a bit of a brick wall, but hopefully they can kind of work away around it. Smoke wall goes out. They're going to get a plan out of this one. This is this is well orchestrated. They've actually got Doji to lurk on long A as well. He's probably sitting behind a smoke, and now they can fall back. It's going to be a 5-on-5 five -five retake, but Adren pushed up aggressively, finds himself an AK for his troubles. Batinsky's going to have the reply. Flashbang goes out. Going to be a little bit of a peek here. Batinsky's still alive, and it's going to be Bubble to find one more. He's still trying to go to work his Zeus, but his position is going to be compromised here. The aggressive push comes out, but it's going to be a one-single face. It's Glace and Tensky Bubble to finish things off, and they only lose one player out of the out of that round ultimately, so Rogue going to hit double digits. Three rounds the difference. But that bomb plant really solidifies this buy coming up from the Gambit side. You can see they've got players over 7,000. That's Mo, who didn't invest anything into the last round. Full utility for pretty much everybody on board. And uh, this is as big of a buy as Gambit's going to get. So we'll see what they've got, what kind of an answer it is. But ultimately on the Rogue side, because they've been able to string some rounds together, yeah. very healthy money and a big buy from them as well. And the funny thing is that Rogue are the team that are getting pumped up. They're starting to get a little bit, you know, uh, fiery, kind of get in the face, start cheering. Gambit don't really do that. They're not that team. Very stoic very in reserved, nature, very yeah. CIS style sort of approach to it. So for them, I can imagine it's probably getting pretty annoying. And this is a big round for them. If they don't pick this up, you've almost got to give it to Rogue. Almost. It's going to be hard for them to recover. I mean, they have stacked up the money bonus at this point with Rogue stringing together rounds. It's going to be very difficult. But ultimately, I mean, you look at it, the, the buy is good the money is going to start trickling in and they're going to be able to continue to put the pressure onto Rogue with, with repeat buys, forces, and things of that nature. But it's it's a tough look right now. And uh, Dren, is he going to give anything away here at Long A? I mean, he was jump peeking. Kadian's watching this from Long A. He's got an opportunity into this one. The smoke goes out. He's got player up aggressive as well. That's Victor. It's going to be playing behind the flower pots. And there it is. The, the ruse is up. The jig is up. And Dren's going to go down. That's going to be on Hobbit over here towards B and Bubble hitting shots. When you're hitting shots like that, it's very difficult to get into the site. He's going to be able to fall back into the water pit. They've got Glace in the back lines as well. Not able to connect on Zeus. Aww. And this has just gone from bad to worse. The Molotov even killing Dozia. I mean, you just saw it happen. It spread at the last second. It'll be down to the AWP of Mo. Gets one and done. Only one kill on the board again for the Gambit side. The struggle continues. And I just want to see a cam on Rogue's faces right now because... They're pumped. Yeah, they are, because... Rightfully so. They know they are tilting the hell out of Gambit here. So, if any of you fancy in production, if you can, just get a camera on their faces. I know it's late. Don't worry about it if you can't. 
I wouldn't blame you. But Kadian's going to go for an opening pick. And if he gets it, trust me, there he will be. There you go. That was, that's that's you what get. you get, Lauren. Shut up. What a We're tease. tired. What a tease. <laughs> This is this is risky though. Pushing two buttons is too much. Exactly. No, leave them alone. It is. T that's probably like three <laughs> buttons. You have to put on the preview. They cut to it. I think. I don't know how it works. Production. I room. I'll go and check it out though, guys. Don't you worry. And there we go. Kaden's gonna find Adren. That's pretty important at this point. Mo instantly goes in for the trade as well. This is this is the sort of play that can cost you a big build up. Is that instant repeat against an orb, which is normally, you know, there's, there's, there's times to use it. On long, probably not that time. You've got to be very, very cautious as to how you time yourself on this. But 5v4, one smoke, two... Oh, you know, excuse me, two floats, two... Oh, my God, my words. Two smokes, two flashes. And they've still got a good shot at this here, Gambit. They can still make something happen. So they could do the smoke walk towards the back side of B and go for the head of it. Hobbit's provided a great entry point. Now, Bubble going down has given them a little bit of silver lining. It's the adaption through Monster. But who's that sitting by the barrels? Or Glace. Walking down? Glace. I don't know if he's got a feeling of this one. He's got a sense. He's actually looking the wrong way here. And there's loads of players out through Monster. This could be the changing point. Finally. Oh, ready my for God. It. No. Kadian's there. They don't expect nice. it at all. Zeus will check. What a great bit of intuition play from him. Hobbit as well. Pulling them through by the straps of their boots. But Kadian now left in a 1v2. This is not going to happen for him. And there is the reply. Finally, Gambit bite back. But that was just on the verge. You can see how much these guys want it. And look at the difference in this sort of picture. Even though Rogue were behind, they were just, just getting back into the game, just getting pumped up. That You could hear them. The, the excitement was palpable. And then you look at Gambit, who just suddenly get back in the game. They finally get that 14th round. Deadpan. Nothing. This is meant to be business. We are meant to be winning this every single day of the week. Yeah, that, <clears throat> that round actually comes off of a hero play from Hobbit. Getting those four yes. frags over at that B-bomb site. If he doesn't do that, then... You know, <clears throat> potentially a really good look for the Rogue side to, to be able to culminate another victory on the board. Talking about Victor, look at this push from Tinsky and him. They're all the way out through Playground right now. They're getting a ton of information that this is going to be a telegraph play towards the B-bomb site. They can come up from Subway, but the rotation is going to be swift going in towards the back lines, and the backstab is going to be real. They've actually caught out one player. That's going to be a Dren getting caught out. Oh. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but man advantage going the way of Rogue. And if they reset now... You could potentially see a 14 to 13 scoreline before Gambit can formulate a big buy. This is even, I mean, they came down to two weapons in the last round that they were able to save through between Hobbit and Zeus. So it's also potentially maybe even double save territory for him, which is even more terrifying because Rogue is going to get an opportunity at maybe tying things up at 14-14. We could be looking at another full 30 rounds or even overtime in this. Yeah, we really could be going to OT. It depends how Gambit now mentally reset. It's never been about anything more than that. It's the mental game, and that is it. That is snapping point. Zeus and Dozier now last two alive against five. Sheer and utter unbridled aggression came out from Rogue that completely flipped this round on its head. And Zeus... We left scratching his head going, where did this all go wrong? There's at least the first step on a ladder to redemption, but the ladder's kind of, I guess, wobbling beneath his feet as he's got 20 seconds and really no shot towards the site unless he goes superhuman and somehow tears through this map. Don't see it happening. Maybe another kill, sure, but there it is. Tenski going to find it. Now Rogue, get back to where they were. Just picking up this lead. <clears throat> These guys are focused as you like. Yeah, and I want to see the money. I want to see what the money situation is here for the for the terrorist side, yep. because I mean you can obviously see they're they're pretty deflated right now. Zeus trying to figure out what the hell they need to do in order to close this one down. Two rounds is what they need. Can we hit tab real quick? Beautiful. So fourteen hundred dollars for Mo. No op is going to be on the table for him unless they get a bomb plant and Zeus drops him one into the next round. Definitely a tough spot for Gambit to be in. This I mean they they bought armor deagle on Doja. He had the high bank, so he's going to be able to invest a little bit more. But this is going to be why the balloons. Why? Zeus trying to go man mode right now. They're going to try to five-man push their brute force their way into this A bomb site, and this could be to their chagrin. This could be a complete mow down. Kadian opens up, finds one. They've got a player at Optimus. That's going to be Victor. Finds two. Bomb has been dropped as well, and not really any chance of a recovery into this one unless a drink can go massive with this Deagle. Doja, where are you, buddy? Still trying to find him, and it's Kadian at Optimus now. He finishes it off, so there it is. Now it's going to be what kind of buy is Gambit going to go for into this one? This is where it's really scary because they're all 4,000. 3,300 for Mo. They're, they're forcing. They're going to force it. You know that it's Gambit. Wow. Of course they're going to force it. Why wouldn't you? A loss here is not going to leave <laughs> much in the tank for... No, it's uh, really not. ...for avoiding getting up to match point. This is a oh, great opportunity bye. for Rogue. This is a miserable buy. Yeah, it really is. Um, okay, what do you do with this? Any aggression is going to be a huge problem 
And this one pushed up by Party. I'm not sure who that is. Is it Cadian again? And you can see the quick split through underpass. That's Dozier trying to punish purely that. See if he can catch him off. And seeing the molly means that it's indicated someone has pushed up. So maybe not fancying having to clear, use all that time to clear toilets with limited utility. So let's try another approach. Let's look for some, uh, another way in towards this map. Spelling out one spotting on B, ironically enough does mean that they're giving away a bit of the game here. Now here come the mollies and they want to work off this. You don't want to just let them go to waste and they're not. The four-man play down monsters coming in, but great counter flash is holding them back. And now the reset. Rogue falls back, readjusts, and waits to see if Gambit breaks upon the shore. And they do, but it's Tenski. Two kills back to back. Now two remain for the D-side. Gambit falling like flies. And what a stand so far from Rogue. This is going to be 14-14. And I don't care if I'm sleep deprived and slurring my words. This is a great game of CS. The Rogue finally stepped up to yeah this is the recovery that we were looking for out of them uh, you talked about i mean it was a 10-5 half rogue has stepped up absolutely massive going into the second half and being down to mo 40 seconds so he can play a little bit of mind gaming but he's only got 23 hp to work with one bullet's going to finish him off bubble very low playing in the water pit but you got katie with the up in the back lines by graffiti side opposite graffiti and glaze gonna wait for it they find it they take him down Tied up 14-14. You can see they're getting in their heads. They're trying to they're trying to work the magic right now, and it's working. I mean, Rogue have, have pulled this one back. It's going to be an absolutely miserable buy, miserable buy if they go for it on the Gambit side or if they decide to play for the tie. Yeah, and they're going to force into this one. I want to see something faster out of them. They've been, you know, they, they walk to a certain spot, throw their smokes, walk up, and then Here try to explode go. on the site. Just, just hit it. Get in there. Get in their faces. Yeah, let's see how this goes then. This could be make or break for Gambit. The point being their money is so bad right now. Into the next round after this win or lose, unless it's incredibly beautifully clean that they recover every rifle from the opponent, it's not going to look good. Um, so, with the whistle of Victor till still kind of ringing through their, through their heads at this point, I can imagine that they're trying to pull themselves back in a position that they can do something with this. Now, generally hitting this site, they've been getting maybe one entry and then kind of being hindered by players at bank, players by the truck, players at, you know, somewhere. Oh, the game's so tired. Windows 10 is sleepy. There we go, back into the game. <laughs> but the problem is they've never got enough to be able to clear out the site, which is kind of dissemble the crossfires. So for Gambit, it has to be all in one, kind of, you know, this really well-timed, aggressive hit. We'll see if it comes in. One on long, spotted out. Couple of smokes go in. Counter flashes go in. Look at that smoke wall. That's a nice piece, actually. Is there a gap in that smoke, though? Yeah, Victor finds one. Oh my God! This, bad this to worse. This could be it. Yeah, this is this is bad to worse. I mean, they they need the bomb plan ultimately if they want to be able to find any buy into the next round. Twenty five seconds left. Drin can't fall back from this. They've got so much map control right now, so much site control for the CT side of Rogue. They just need to bide their time. Tinsky's gonna face. Gives up one. Glaze over here from Optimus. He gets spotted out, loses his life as well. So now it starts to get a little bit more tricky. Adrian, is he going to bait out the bomb plant? No, he's not. He's just going to stick it, gets the bomb down. That's the money in the bank. Going to be looking for another one. Kadian, very low, does manage to find the frag. So they are going to go up on a match point. And you can see, obviously, they're brimming with emotion right now. And this is the comeback that they were looking for. This is the comeback that we like to see. And Again, obviously pretty deflated over there on the uh, on the terrorist side for Gambit. They need to tie this one up, and they're going to have... That bomb plant, though, is is extremely important. That bomb plant is going to afford them at least some rifles into this round. Yeah. They went into that round, they had, what, one rifle? Two rifles, maybe? So, tough spot. This time, they actually have over 4,000, so they're going to be able to pick up. I mean, full nade kit on a Dren, most of a nade kit on Zeus, albeit without an HE or an incendiary to work with, but this is the best that it's going to get. So it's overtime or bust now. Rogue, what a comeback. 10-5 at the half. Gambit was up at one point to 13 to, I believe, 5. This has been, I think, 10 rounds in a row for Rogue. Here we go. Let's see if they can close out or are we going to go to OT. Knowing the way today is gone. It'll be OT. It's OT. It's already 3 a.m. Why not? Why stop here? My eyes are starting to feel funny. They don't focus very well right now. So we'll see how that goes. I might be blind by the end of this. Going forward I'm starving this. as well. Oh, you're, you are screwed. Yeah. Um, good luck getting food right now. Anyway, food aside, Kadian has the opportunity. Whoa, there was such a chance then. The difference 
a second can make in this. And he, he's going to feel it. He's going to get it. There you go. Mo goes down. And Adren quickens the pace. He spots it. Katie now calls for help. He has to cry for help. But he stands tall on his own. He gets down at Adren. Now the Molly's come in, but Hobbit finds one back. So this is still all even. 3v3. He tries to get a cheeky shot through that plant site. Not going to happen. Zeus in a really tricky angle to hold. You get checked on it. You get flashed on it. But it was worth it to secure the plant. Now backs away. Checking for the flank is Hobbit. Oh, Already waiting for this. For this. Yeah. Bubble, slow to play this one. Flashbang goes out. He's actually going to get back into bathrooms control. Bubble has not pounced on this yet. This is such a strange retake. Zeus drops. Bubble coming around on the flank. The smoke goes out under the bomb. They're going to flash out from the corner. Doja's looking for it. Missing the shot, though. Hobbit's going to be able to find Bubble. Doja goes in on one. It's OT. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lauren has lost her mind. Can production put on Hello Darkness, my old friend? Just for me? Yeah, I know production. I know, buddy. I just... Yay! Overtime! Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk <laughs> with you again. Uh, welcome to OT, boys. All right, we're doing it. Christ. We are what, doing it. What time do we get out of here? That's the question. You know what I mean? Like Everyone's in that weird, like, delirious state of like, oh, it'll be fun, guys. And I was like, it's 3 a.m. And it's, we, know, we, we don't know how we're getting home. I think I'm sleeping here now. <sighs> At least the hotel's right around the corner. That's true. It's literally a five-minute walk from here. So, overtime rules, $10,000, MR3, max rounds three per side. You start on the side that you finish the half on. So Rogue is going to get their first crack on the CT side. That's kind of the big thing about this. Yeah. Um, I'm still waiting for the sound of silence to be put on. Not heard it yet. I need Which this. version would you want? The Simon and Garfunkel? Or would you have you heard the disturbed version? The disturbed version is actually very good. It's really good. Surprisingly very, good. Very, very good. Surprisingly good. Um, but the original is a classic. And then nothing beats like slow pans to the pain in my face right now of OT. <laughs> in their favor. This is the scary thing though. Is we know how dynamic the rogue CT side has been and how lackluster the Gambit side has been. I mean, if it wasn't for them pulling off that miracle round at the end of regulation, this wouldn't have even come into overtime. I mean, they were down 15 to 14. They had to, they had to get the terrorist side final round in order to just force overtime. But for now, Mo finishing it off back-to-back -back kills. It's going to be 20 to 19. Remember, now it's going to be two rounds that Gambit has to win in order to shut this one down. Three rounds, a flawless half for Rogue to push this one out. But two rounds for Rogue is going to force at least a triple overtime. So... It's going to be very interesting to say the least. Gambit need to win two terrorist side rounds in order to shut this one out. And that's something that they've failed to do in a very long time. Yeah. Very long time. It was something like a string of 10 rounds for Rogue before Gambit was able to get one terrorist side round, and that was in regulation. They haven't gotten a single T side round in overtime yet. It's crazy. It's absolute lunacy. It's lunacy, I say. Lunacy. Okay. Let's look at this. I, I'm taking this round by round. I'm just going to take it real slow, real easy. And let's see what we have coming out from the CTs. Look at this purchase for one. Kaden back in the orb. See there's some aggression coming out from the CTs. Mo's going to be looking for this, or he should be. Kaden had been doing that, and he's actually backed away from it. The early need, nades just going to thwart him. That's that simple as it is. Um, easy adjustment back to the Guardian, quote unquote, stairs, or just the stairs by toilet, however you want to call it. And Gambit going back to what they were actually doing before, playing up long. Now, something that was highlighted quite consistently was the fact that they were never really flashing smoke and pressuring these players, allowing Kadian to have completely free roam here. Really nice kind of set pieces between him and I think it was, was it Victor? Yeah, it was Victor that was playing close on the wall by, by the yeah. plants, yeah. But the problem, the difference is now they've actually got a pick here. This is a big yeah. difference actually, and there's the follow-up. Suddenly they're landing shots and still taking these kind of questionable fights, but there's the flashes, there's the smokes to follow. But there's still nuisance players here. There's still Victor, for example. Are they going to commit Victor. though? I don't know. That's this the, the thing. thing. The bomb is not actually committed. And now, a couple of kills have come the other way. Maybe they're going to go back on themselves. Where are you going, Gambit? You had it all. Gambit, don't do not do this to me. Gambit, you win this round. You are a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. Don't lose this round. They need a man right now. The only thing that's beneficial is the fact that Bubble is going to get caught out in this position. Zeus is going to find that kill, and the rotation is so far away. So that is that is at least a silver lining into this one. Gambit going to get themselves the bomb plant. And with that... 
look to finish off this round. This is done. They're going away from this. They're going to have to save. they got to get the alt back into the hands of Katie, and he was so dynamic with it on their CT sides. And I said it was, it was the first team to win a terrorist side is going to win the map. Well, I'm eating my words already. Gambit's going to find themselves on map point. They're going to get two cracks at it, see what they can do into this one. They need 22 rounds in order to put this one to bed so we can all go to bed. And, I mean, if they can do it in a decisive fashion like that, I mean, Hobbit, he's just solo lurking over towards B, and he's able to catch out the player. Mo up on out battle against Katie and wins the fight. Glace goes down aggressive. So, I mean, wholeheartedly, nice round from Gambit and keeping four players alive. This is completely different. That's massive, though. Losing another rifle at the end of the round, and Victor has to stay alive, and he will. Now, this is the thing. This is this is where the sleepiness got me. This is this is trickery, guys. The tricky little tricksters. I almost forgot about the flag that was next to Rogue. That mm. now I know it's not all of them, but I almost let it slip. And now it all comes crashing back to me, and of course he was always getting out this way. And you did mention it earlier when we got into the. Yeah, uh, but I, I forgot about it for a bit. I forgot about it for a whole five seconds. <clears throat> However, at this point, 21 to 19, Gambit do not need much more. But again, this was always meant to be their map. They were never meant to get this far. It was never meant to be this difficult for them to close out this map. It was always going to be theirs, in theory. In However, theory. One minute and 20 seconds on the board. They're clearing out as they go. Rogue are playing far more passive on the side here, playing a little bit more respectful at this point because, well, they have to. Simple as that. And Victor back in this spot again. Yeah, but he's been pretty crucial from that area, getting multiple kills, especially when he's got the backup of Katie, and we've seen how dynamic he's been with the AWP in that A-bomb site. They salvaged it. They get it back to him into this round. It's going to come down to these opening picks, and again, it's Hobbit over towards B. Just dancing around. He's up on short. He's actually behind the sandbags. It's short. There's a player at barrels. There's a player playing aggressive towards that monster pipe. But it's Katie to open up, finds the pick onto a Dren. They're already starting to work that bomb towards short. This is dangerous. The bomb's by himself. If Victor peeks out and wins this duel, Zeus is going to go down with absolutely no opportunity for a refrag. And that's going to give up the... Uh, it's going to give up the information that that bomb is over in that, that corridor. So there's the peak. Zeus what? lands the shot, though. Nicely done. He had just got done throwing out a smoke. That's going to go over towards the Optimus They're side. depending on that. And look at the time left, 25 seconds. They're depending on such individual moments. It's so dangerous. The 20 seconds left. If something goes wrong here, it all goes wrong. And there's two kills. Now they're down to two. Hobbit and Zeus. And where are they? Zeus is alone. Hobbit's all the way at the B-bomb site. This is a really Katie's risky situation. Positive. Katie and those starting to rotate. Oh, no. He's, he's got 18 HP. He's being rushed. Five Zeus seconds. Is not do now yep. molly goes down Perfect. time is everything and they stay alive rogue with another life left that one crucial piece of utility at the end of the round makes all the difference the molotov onto the bomb site <sighs> triple ot probably shit it's going to be 4 a.m. if it goes that far. <laughs> I have nothing better to do with my life, so this is fine. <laughs> this is my job. I like it. I get to talk about CS for a living. Don't worry. I'll pull it back together. Now, the point being, Rogue will pull it back from the brink. It's a rather impressive play, but Gambit, again, core issues are plenty. Let's be very, very real about this. I'm not particularly liking the way they're playing now. I think they're getting caught out and they're depending a lot on individuals to nail these shots so late. It's it's kind of... Okay, it's, it's fine to do it because, well, we've seen Na'Vi pull it off for years. Great. But they're not quite Na'Vi. They've got some essence and they are getting openers here, but still... That's the third round in a row that Hobbit has gotten that lurk kill at B. Yeah. What are they going to do with it now? They can't run the clock down. 50 seconds left on the clock. It, it bit them in the ass the last time around. Yep. I mean, they've got decent utility to work with. Hobbit's still lurking over here. There's three CTs on this B-bomb site. It's Katie and Alone at A. They're slowly starting to work Victor back up towards the A-bomb site, but if they commit it now, they could potentially go for that hit. It looks like they're actually going to throw a fake towards the A-bomb site. Smoke execution and everything like that. Fall back, join up with the bomb over towards the monster side and push in. But look at this hold that they have over towards monster. This is a really smart play. Bubble is in a great position right here. Doge is going to be able to find one. That's going to force the rotate. The flashbang goes out. Hobbit's got it. Yes. So that is going to leave it in a three-man advantage now. <laughs> Gambit looking good. Hobbit's going to be able to find one more, and it's down to Katie and finds the parting gift at the A-bomb site. Can he get a second on a Doge? He can. Trying to bring this one back with one HP. He's got to ace it, clutch it to force triple overtime. Coming up top, Moe's going to finish it off. Double OT, and it ends.
Good night. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Adios. Adios. Be, All right. Be, be, be fresh, my friends. Let's kind of throw this one back. Mirage was a travesty for Rogue. That should have been their map. It wasn't. Their depth looked pretty shallow on their T-sides. We saw some quirky plays, which was great, but it never transpired to more than that, sadly. And that was where you saw players over and over again starting to use that gambit, really getting back into control. Now, Nuke was just weird. Nuke was just one of those maps where it's like, how does it happen? Don't know, but it did. It wasn't meant to happen, but it worked out, and then overpass was what we've just seen. Now, I'm not going to pester the players because everyone's tired. There's no point doing it. Gambit have been here since the start of the day, so everyone's going to go home at this point. And so are we. So we're going to go and chill out. Guys, I'm tired. It's bedtime. Have a lovely evening. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more games. This is only the top half of the bracket, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we we're, we're actually other missing... Half as well. Yeah, we're missing uh, one of the other opening BO3s as well because one yeah. of the teams couldn't make it here today. So we've got one more opening round uh, BO3. Then we've got all the uppers and lowers going should, up Should I do that semis, fun game of I look on HLTV to see how far away the game is and I realize it's like really, really close? It's close. All right. It's close. It's eight hours away. No, not you. Where are you? I want to see where it is, though. The opening game tomorrow is going to be ooh, Kingwin ooh. and Uranix. Da, 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 da. Uh, eight, eight hours and, and hours. 35 minutes until game starts. So on that note, we are going to go to bed. Do check out HLTV. Look up the Predator Masters 3. If you want some information, I'll just look up Take TV on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want. These guys are everywhere. You guys should know who they are by now. But tune back into this stream around that time in about eight hours and 35 minutes. If you want to stay up the whole time, Go for it. I won't be. It's time for me to pass out because I can't feel my face anymore and it makes me feel weird. So, guys, I'm going to go to bed. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, see you tomorrow.